How do you take a 40 year old classic Volkswagen and make it reliable, fast, and fun to drive all the time? You make it electric. This truck started its life as a 1985 Volkswagen Doka, which stands for double cab. So welcome. This truck, this Volkswagen Vanagon Doka double cabin, it's going electric with a Tesla motor. Is this sacrilege? Maybe. Is it gonna be super cool? Yes. Is it maybe not your taste? Probably, but 300 horsepower for not that much money is kind of hard to argue with. In any electric conversion project, you wanna start with the motor. Yes, this motor right here. Yep, this is a motor. This is a Tesla Model 3 rear small drive unit. This is from a 2022 Model 3. This motor is good for 220 kilowatts peak, which translates to roughly 300 horsepower. When you're buying one of these motors, make sure you can get as many of the connections and coolant lines, little stub axles as possible. It'll just save you money in the long run. Honestly, one of these high voltage connectors that goes to the battery, you can usually get this included for no extra cost. But if you have to buy one, 180 bucks, 250 bucks. Stub axles, if you can get them, great. If not, don't worry, that's probably the easiest and cheapest things. You can get brand new ones for less than 100 bucks with a CV. Final thing is your 12 volt or your low voltage uh, wiring harness. You've got inputs for your brake, throttle, on, off, reverse, forward, neutral, all that stuff goes through here. I've already designed most of this project in CAD, and my current design has the Model 3 motor sitting in the rear between the frame rails. In order to confirm that all my measurements are correct and that the motor will actually fit, I need to move the car up on some jack stands to fit the motor underneath. Okay, it's hard to see, but we are currently underneath the car in the rear in the old engine bay. This is our Model 3 motor. This motor goes like this. Okay, this is the orientation it was in the Tesla with the CV shafts out in the back and the bulk of the motor up in the front. So what we're gonna be trying to do is locating one motor mount up there on that frame rail and the other one up on that frame rail. Okay, because you see we've got one motor mount there, second motor mount over on this side. We have our Tesla battery. This is from a Model 3 or Model Y. They're the same thing, more or less. Uh, this is a standard range battery, which means it is 50 kilowatts. I purchased the motor and the battery together through Facebook Marketplace. Picking up the motor was no problem. It fit easily. It would fit in really any car. However, the Tesla battery is massive. It's about seven and a half feet long, over four feet wide. So what I ended up doing is I built a little tray in the back of my van. I had to go over the wheel wells because of the width of the battery and I was able to fit the length of the battery with an inch to spare. Loading it in was pretty difficult. The seller that I bought it from had five friends over and we were able to barely load it into the van. For unloading, I had an easier time since I have access to an engine hoist and was able to remove it that way. For the meantime, we're going to store it in the back of the Doka since this will be the latter half of the project. So for the meantime, it is sitting in the back of the Doka. The battery itself weighs around 750 pounds. You can see here that the 750 pounds is sitting behind the rear axle line, which is causing the truck to squat down a lot more than it normally would. Now, the reason I went with the standard range, not the extended range or extended plus, I specifically chose this smaller battery though, because inside of this case, the battery modules only come to about right here. They stop right about here, is if I open this case up and take everything out, I've actually found examples online of where people have opened this up, shrunk down the battery case, and made a smaller battery pack. If I change some of the mounting orientation, I should be okay, maybe to take out 20 or so, which is perfect. I have about 50 inches underneath the van again to work with. There's a couple reasons I'm making this electric. First, when I bought this, I had no motor, I had no transmission, all I had was this shell. 
Now, I've always dreamed of making something electric, but for something like this, which is kind of rare and really practical to have gas powered, it just didn't really make sense to go electric. So I had sourced a gas motor, a transmission, 2.1 liter engine and a manual transmission for a two wheel drive setup. And I was trying to find a gas tank and get everything going. I finally started digging through this Doka to see what was going on, what I really needed to work with. The more I dug, the more I found. Problem is when you convert these to four wheel drive, there are some modifications you have to do. I believe the engine and transmission have to be moved forward by an inch or two. This is where the transmission mounts right here. You can see they welded in this mount. Now the mounting bolts for the two wheel drive you can see right there are kind of half covered. In 1985, there was no such thing as the four wheel drive synchro variant of the Vanagon. That started in 1986. So what someone did, they took this 1985 Doka. They took a four wheel drive version of a Vanagon. They cut that one up, welded on a bunch of the four wheel drive components. Now, before I bought this, previous owner took all those four wheel drive parts and sold them off. They were worth more than the truck itself. So as I started going through this, I realized a lot of stuff was actually missing and it was gonna be a pain to try to reverse engineer and figure out what someone had already done to this. Just, it wasn't done perfectly. It wasn't factory, it was not stock. So I decided, why would I try to work backwards and figure out what someone had already done to this, take it back to stock and have a mild mannered, slow truck. Now, don't get me wrong. They're still fun with the stock engine in this, but you can go 60 miles per hour downhill, that's it. It's just not super practical, especially on today's roads. It kind of became a no brainer, especially when I found a really good deal on Tesla motor to make this thing electric. So the stock engine in this model was a 2.1 liter water boxer engine, good for about 130 horsepower, brand new. As previously mentioned, this was my original plan and I had actually purchased a stock 2.1 liter motor. But when I decided to go electric, I reached out to a friend of mine who I knew was looking for a good running engine and I was able to sell it to him for a pretty good price. Not only does this help get another stock van again back on the road, but it also helps fund the electric conversion process. Nowadays, there's a company that sells bored out versions of these engines and you can get crazy different numbers and spend a crazy amount of money to get the engine that you'd like. Now, a more popular option is a Subaru swap. Subarus are all over the place. They get crashed all the time and they have pretty decent engines. They are notably known for having head gasket failures, but outside of that, they're pretty good engines. There are so many companies that do the swap that this engine swap is plug and play. There's all the components that you would need, adapter kits, wiring harnesses, ECU tuning, exhaust system, oil pan modifications, everything that you need that you would normally have to do for yourself on some kind of bespoke engine swap, it's out there, you can buy it. And you can even pay a company to do it. Now, in most of these options, you're oftentimes looking at five, six, 10, 15, $20,000. I would say the median engine swap that a lot of people do costs them around $10,000 if you go to a shop. You can do it yourself, but honestly, you're gonna end up spending seven or $8,000 on sourcing an engine, getting all the adapter plate parts, all the off the shelf components, and then you're there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a Tesla motor in this. Reason being, it's cheap. I'm not gonna say exactly what I got my Tesla motor and Tesla battery for, but if you're savvy and if you're patient, you can get a really good deal on a Tesla motor and battery. Try to get them together. That's the best way to get a good deal. Now, 
How are we going to control this Tesla motor and Tesla battery? Well, there's a couple ways that you can do this. One option is you do a full Tesla integration. I've seen this before on plenty of cars. The most notable is by this guy in Australia that just did it in a classic Land Rover. Pretty cool. He took a salvaged Tesla, fixed it back up, totally disassembled it, and then took all the guts of the Tesla and put it into a Land Rover and it works perfectly. That's a great option. Reason being is you could probably pick up a salvaged crash Tesla nowadays for between seven and $10,000 if, again, you're savvy and you spend a lot of time on Facebook Marketplace. Well, in my case, I don't really have the space to have a full salvaged Tesla to pick parts on and then put them into this truck. So what I'm doing is buying the motor and buying the battery separately and then integrating them into this truck. There's only a couple of ways that you can use the motor and the battery outside of the Tesla that they were originally intended for. The first being EV controls. EV controls has the T2C controller, go on any forum, go on any EV conversion site. That's what everybody uses. It's great, turnkey. Second option, Nginext, uh, they're a Canadian company. They work pretty good too. Costs $3,000, so it's about $1,000 cheaper, but from what I've read and seen online, it's not quite as plug and play. There is some CAN bus stuff that you have to figure out and do some programming, which again is gonna be the same with the EV controls method, but apparently it's just way easier and straightforward to go. So that's what I'm going to do. Of course, throughout this process, we're going to be upgrading the brakes. We are going to be upgrading the seats. We're going to be upgrading the interior. We're gonna be putting air conditioning and a heater in it to run off of the high voltage battery. And ideally, we're gonna put a bunch of off-road, typical stuff that you would see on one of these anyways. I will break down the cost of this setup at the end when it's all done, but I expect to be way under all of the Subaru conversions that I talked about earlier. Now, of course, that might be naive. I'm probably gonna spend more than I'm expecting to. That's kind of the rules with projects, but I think I'll be able to get done with this for under $10,000. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, sounds like a good plan. And also, if you were to try to go to any shop and have them convert this to electric, you're looking at 30, 40, $50,000. The going rate right now for Vanigans is $50,000 for an electric conversion. So I think we can get through with this with $10,000. The goal is to make this thing completely turnkey. There are going to be no weird errors or secret buttons you have to press. You just turn the key, boom. You have all the power of a Tesla. You have all the looks and styles of a classic Volkswagen. I'll be making videos on every single step of the process of converting this car to electric. And hopefully these videos will be helpful for you if you ever plan on taking one of your classic vehicles and making it electric. So if there's anything specifically you wanna see, go ahead and comment on this and I'll try to make a video about that specific process. Right now we're gonna be talking about brakes, motors, batteries, and accessories.